Hi everyone, I'm Joe from Tribal Arts Films and this is part 3 of the tutorial series on a beginner's guide to kinetic typography in Fusion. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at the follower modifier which is a very important modifier for animating your kinetic typography in Fusion. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so first we're going to create a text node. We'll hook that up to our media out and we'll create our text. Let's say kinetic. Let's increase the size here. Good. Now in our text box we're going to right click on it and we're going to add a modifier. Now you can say you can see in the inspector window there is a modifier tab but it is not highlighted because we haven't added any modifiers. So if we add a modifier the modifier we are wanting to add is the follower modifier. Now when we click on our modifier here a whole bunch of parameters show up. Now it's important you know what these parameters are because whatever animations you do within these parameter within these uh, tabs or parameters will be affected by the follower modifier so you have similar parameters in your tools inspector in the tools inspector you have your transform your shading and some other options and your layout now in the modifier, the follower modifier, you also have transform, you have your text, sorry, transform and your shading. Whatever animations you do with the text, transform or shading will be rippled across to the other characters. So let's do an animation of opacity. What I want to do is reveal each of these words one at a time. So we want to change the opacity from zero to one and ripple that animation across the characters. To do that, let's go to the start of our animation and we want to start straight from frame zero. And we're under the shading parameter and let's bring the opacity down. Look at that, nothing's happening. That's because we haven't published the animation. In the follower modifier, any animation any parameter you change will not be revealed or published until you've added a keyframe. So if we add a keyframe now and we move this opacity, it now affects our text. So at frame zero, we're going to go add an opacity of zero. Then after one second, at 24 frames, we'll bring our opacity back to one. Let's have a look at what happens now when we play back. Okay. Now you can see that the opacity is working. However, it is not doing what we wanted, which is to reveal each text one at a time. That's because we have to adjust our timing parameter. So if we go to our timing parameter here, let's change the delay and let's just have a look at what happens now when I change the delay this value here represents uh, frames frame number so let's go let's say 10 frames and let's go back and let's press play whoops let me increase my loop range now you look at that now you can see that the opacity animation is now working. I think the important word we have to use with this timing parameter is the word initiate. The timing parameter initiates animation. So you can see that in our first frame, our animation is initiated on our first text. Then after 10, frames around 10 frames the that animation that we've done is now rippled to our next text and then after 10 frames the next frame uh, text and so on and so on now the range at which this animation initiates 
we've selected a range of all the characters so we want this animation to be initiated on all characters let's say I want to initiate only a certain range of characters so I can click on this and go to character range and let's say I just want to initiate the first three characters so what I'll do let me just have a I can go to this last character I can say the first two characters let's go back and let's play okay what's happening here what is happening here well that opacity animation that we've created is only being initiated on the first three characters based upon our character range which is from character 0 to character 2 so you can see as we scroll through only the three characters are initiated which means that the other characters in the range are not affected by that opacity animations therefore it will just start at its default state without any animation but the first three will have its animation the order at which we want these characters to be revealed is from the left to the right so therefore it initiates the animation from the left to the right now if we change this from right to left let's have a look at what happens it initiates the animation from the right to the left it initiates that opacity animation and ripples it from the right to the left and the delay type is that it will initiate the animation between each character let's go back to left to right so between each character it's going to initiate the animation if we change this to initiating the animation or delaying between first and last character let's have a look let's just have a look first to show you it's a lot more faster so it's kind of like the whole animation lasts 10 frames whereas if we choose between each character the animation lasts 10 frames between each character so you can see how powerful this tool is knowing that we can also affect other parameters such as the transform and the text this gives us the basis now for powerful kinetic typography in Fusion and we will, it will make our animations more consistent across our typography so that's just with the opacity animation you can do this with all the other parameters that are within these three tabs the text, the transform and the shading and this is the foundation now this is the basis now that we're going to be using on our next few tutorials where we create our grow and shrink animation a stretch and squeeze animation our speed and break animations that's what the follow modifier does and that's why it's so powerful not only can we ripple animation with our shading elements we can also ripple animations on our rotation elements shear size we can ripple animations within those three parameters and with that that is the end of this tutorial i think we've gone through how powerful the follower modifier is in fusion and how that is the foundation now from which we can start creating all types of kinetic animations in fusion Thank you for watching if you've liked this tutorial please press the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell because there's more tutorials coming up now in the next tutorial we're going to start with animating all our different types of kinetic animations starting with the grow and shrink kinetic animation okay so see you in the next part thank you for watching